a stunning fall inspired chocolate pumpkin cake that will drop your jaw when you hear that it's keto. I mean, I didn't even know I could bake like this. After several failed attempts to nail this recipe, I almost gave up, but then I decided to use my baking instincts and my background in science. I'm gonna share with you later what I did and I was able to turn this disaster into a masterpiece. So let's get to baking so I can show you how to make a marbled keto bundt cake. Start by adding one and a half cups of unsalted butter to a large bowl. And yes, you heard that correctly. I know that seems like a lot of butter, but we're actually making the two layers right now. So I'm just focusing on the wet ingredients and we're gonna divide it, which is why it's also important to weigh your bowl before you add your wet ingredients so that we know how much of these wet ingredients is gonna go into each layer. And save your butter wrappers because we're gonna use them later. Then add one and a half cups of sugar-free sweetener that measures cup for cup with sugar. Cream this together with your electric mixer until it's fluffy. And it's important to get some air into your butter so that your cake will puff up as it bakes. So don't stop mixing until it's fluffy, just like this. Next, crack in four eggs. When I started developing this cake recipe, I was using too many eggs. I was using six eggs. I thought I needed that many in order to get a fluffy, spongy cake, but instead that left my cake flat and dense and actually a little bit too moist. And that's a common mistake in keto baking when too many eggs are added. Decreasing my eggs to only four and with the help of another ingredient that we're gonna add a little bit later, that actually helped my cake to rise and create this spongy texture. After two teaspoons of vanilla, we're gonna mix this until combined. And once it's combined, we're gonna do our final weighing and we'll ask Alexa a basic math question. Alexa, what's 6380, no, no. Start over. I get so nervous when I talk to her. I always mess up. 63.88 minus 34.22 is 29.66. And now you'll know how much of the wet ingredients you need to add to each layer. Now let's work on that pumpkin layer. In a medium bowl, we add two cups of almond flour and then a quarter cup of oat fiber. And this is that special ingredient that we add to work with those eggs to form the perfect texture for this cake. Then a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. So oat fiber is a zero carb insoluble fiber and it improves the texture of baked goods by not only adding bulk, but it also absorbs moisture, which helped solve my dense cake problem. Now add in half of your wet ingredients along with one cup of pumpkin puree and then we're gonna mix until combined. Now for the chocolate layer, we're gonna add one cup of almond flour, a quarter cup of oat fiber, one teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. And I took this one step further and I decided to add a scoop of Cacao Bliss just to amplify that chocolate flavor, plus give it a hint of cinnamon. Cacao Bliss is a raw cacao powder blend with superfoods like cinnamon, turmeric, lacuma, Himalayan salt. So it's adding some of those earthy fall flavors that we love along with nutritional benefits like decreased inflammation and helping with gut health and so, so much more. If you wanna try Cacao Bliss, go to earthechofoods.com slash ketofocus and use my code ketofocus to save 15% off of your order. I'll have this link down below for you as well. Now we're ready to assemble our layers, and of course you're gonna need a bundt pan, preferably one that's nonstick. Another issue I had with my original recipe was that my bundt cake stuck to the pan. So I found a solution to prevent that from happening. So we take those wrappers from our butter and just rub that all over the inside lining of your bundt pan. And then I found that just a fine dusting of oat fiber helps to easily release the cake from the bundt pan. It's equivalent to just flouring your cake pan, but we're not using actual flour. Add in about half of your pumpkin batter first, and then once that's evenly spread, we're gonna add in our chocolate batter, followed by the rest of our pumpkin. This is gonna bake in a 350 degree oven for 50 to 55 minutes. And you're gonna know it's done when you insert a clean butter knife into the center and it comes out clean. Then you're gonna let it cool in the bundt cake for several minutes, and I just like to loosen the edges too, just to make sure we're not gonna stick. And ta-da, perfection. I made a simple cream cheese frosting for the top by adding four ounces of softened cream cheese and two tablespoons of butter. Once that's creamed together, all you need is a third cup of powdered sugar-free sweetener. And then to help thin it out, you can add either nut milk or heavy cream, just around two or three tablespoons. I do find that sometimes you can add too much heavy cream and it actually thickens it. So a lot of times using nut milk is a little bit better. And it will give the perfect runny consistency for drizzling down your cake. Using some basic keto baking principles, you can easily recreate all of your favorites from muffins, cookies, pie crust, and I show you exactly how to turn anything keto in this video right here.